What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we're going to be talking everything Brody, Grundy. I know you guys want me to do a Dan uh, mixtape video. That'll be a bit later, but Grundy, let's get into it. So, Brody Grundy, much loved uh, member of the Collingwood family. Um, you know, he's just been, he's been amazing for us, all Australian. I had a huge 2018, huge 2019, which led to his huge ass contract. It's like, what, seven years or, or something like that. Um, and it's rumored to be worth around $1.1 million a year, or $1 million to $1.1 million a year. Now, a couple of years ago, uh, I don't have to remind you, but I will anyway, Adam Trelaw pushed out of the club due to salary cap issues, and then you had Jaden Stevenson go, you had Tom Phillips go, and R2 wasn't a Valagi. I don't think that was mainly salary cap, but uh, Jay Stevenson, Phillips, and Adam Trelaw were definitely salary cap. All much loved players. The Collingwood guys were just, uh, sorry, the Collingwood fans were just, you know, up in arms, especially the way that Collingwood handled it, especially the way they handled Adam Trelaw. This Grundy one's a little bit different. So we're leading up to finals, and with Adam Trelaw, we kind of knew during the offseason what was going on and, and that, you know, all these things were coming out that Adam Trelaw was leaving. Now there's a little bit of bait in the season, which gives Collingwood a little bit more of a hand um, or upper hand than they did with the Trelaw deal. But that's not to say that that's exactly what Collingwood want. So let me run down what's happening with the media and everything right now. So, as we stand right now, Brody Grundy isn't playing another game uh, for the Pies this season. He is contracted for another five years for the Collingwood, and that's, you know, $1 million to $1.1 million or whatever it may be a season, and he will be back in 2023. Now, what's being reported all over the news and all on the radio and stuff is that GWS and Melbourne have sat down and talked to Brody Grundy. So... What does that mean? It means what the hell is going on? Look, players talk to clubs and, and managers all the time, right? But in saying that, this is a little bit of a weird situation because now it's come out that, you know, clubs are reporting that Collingwood are willing to, to, to pay up to $300,000 of Brody Grundy's contract if he leaves to go somewhere else, which means that, the club that he could go to are paying seven hundred to eight hundred thousand uh, dollars, and we're paying three hundred thousand dollars, whilst also paying three hundred thousand of Adam Trelaw's deal as well for another couple of years. Oh man, this is—it's very convoluted. It's very crazy. Could it happen though? Could Brody Grundy leave? Could he get traded to another club? Because that's what it's going to be. He's going to have to be traded, and he's going to need to want to go um, or get pushed out of the club like Adam Trelaw did, which I don't think is going to happen because that is horrendous, horrendous PR if that happens again. So what are the options at the moment? Like I said, GWS and Melbourne are keen on him. GWS only have Proust as their Ruckman. Uh, Melbourne are going to lose Jackson to Fremantle, most likely. Gorn is 31, and Simon Goodman came out and said Gorn is going to be pretty much played uh, in the forward line. We saw that a lot against um, Collingwood. Uh, last week, Grundy could make an impact there uh, as a you know a team that's in their premiership window. Uh, a Gorn and Grundy one two is just insane. Geelong are reportedly keen. Hawthorne just lost Ben McAvoy, and they only have Max Lynch as their sort of uh, big ruckman, so he could go there. Any of the seventeen clubs would want Brody Grundy in their club. But what does that mean for Collingwood? One, it means that we free up at least of up to $800,000 in our salary cap. But fan backlash, we lose, you know, a, a club, a clubman. Like, Brody Grundy absolutely loves this club. He played that Essendon game with one PCL or, or whatever the hell it was, uh, one knee in that last quarter. So he absolutely loves this club um and you know media backlash and the deals and the salary cap and everything like that but what could we get for grundy now this is all hypothetical of course melbourne don't really have much of a hand um maybe a couple of picks maybe there's a third club involved but what would happen if he went to gws so 
this is just, this is me like, you know, um, you know that meme uh, where it's just that conspiracy theory from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There's all that red tape and all red lines and stuff like that. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ. Charlie. That right there is the mail. Now let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please, Mac? I've been dying to talk about the mail for you all day, okay? Collingwood are reportedly very into Tim Taranto, an inside midfielder that we desperately need. Uh, Bobby Hill, a forward. Tanner Brune wants to come down. And I think Jacob Hopper is thinking about coming down as well to Victoria. So GWS also have a huge salary cap that they need to get rid of. Could we see a swap of Brody Grundy for Tim Taranto, Bobby Hill, and maybe a second round pick, and we send a third round pick up like that? That makes the most logical sense. Um, but again, Collingwood miss out or lose on Brody Grundy and don't really have another ruck to come through. But let's talk about that. So at the moment, Collingwood's ruck stocks look like Cameron Cox, uh, Darcy Cameron, Aiden Begg, Brody Grundy. Begg still has a long way to go. We've seen a little bit of him this year. Kind of liked what I've seen. Still has a long way to go, as do all um, ruckmen. They just take ages to develop. Cox is 31 or 32 next year. Uh, Darcy Cameron has been great in the ruck. Um, has excelled when not being that one-two with with Grundy. Now we know Grundy brings more than he's just rucking ability. He brings the the extra midfielder is exactly what he is. He's a tall ass midfielder. He gets the clearances. At one stage he was um, averaging some of the most clearances per game uh, while still being injured. Like he just wasn't in. He wasn't in. No one could average that uh, in their game. Um, good clearance player. Good around the ground. We saw him go forward against West Coast in that final, took a couple of marks, kicked a couple of goals. So we know he can take a mark. We know he um, can push forward if if we need him to. But we've won 11 games without Brody Grundy at the moment. Uh, Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox are doing a fantastic job. Does an extra draft pick you know, let us invest in a big forward in the draft because apparently this this uh, draft is just full of tools and full of forwards uh, and full of uh, ruckmen. So could we do that? The thing that I'm leaning towards is we free up $800,000 in our salary cap. And I know, oh, but you'll be paying two players $600,000 to play against you and probably beat you or, you know, Melbourne get uh, a premiership player um, or, sorry, Melbourne gets someone in their premiership window. Uh, Geelong gets someone in their premiership window. It is, it's hard. It's very hard because I love Grundy. I love everything that he does, everything that he, you know, he go he goes about it. Um, but I, th is it, I think it might be, I don't know. If he stays or if he goes, Either way, it's good for the club. If he stays, I would love to see him renegotiate a deal, maybe back-end it a little bit or, or front-end it. Um, but who's going to renegotiate? If they, if Colin would come up to me and said, Luke, look, man, uh, I know you're on $1.1 million uh, a year, but we're going to have to need you to renegotiate to $800,000 a year. I'll be like, what are you? Like, you gave me this contract, my brother in Christ. Like, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to renegotiate. If he loves the club, he would stay. But if he leaves... And we get Tim Taranto, who is, you know, he won the Giants Best and Fairest in their 2019 grand final um, year, which is huge. Inside midfielder will help us with our clearances because we know we get eaten up in our um, clearances. We do have an aging midfield. Uh, yes, we've got Finn Lay McRae and a couple of others coming through, but we lack an inside midfielder. Tim Taranto can help us. Bobby Hill, as that um, electric small forward, will complement uh, Ginevan well. We know Elliot signed another three-year deal, so... Uh, he could work in tandem with Elliot, that small forward quaff, Bo McCreary and stuff like that. So it, he will be a bit of a development player, uh, especially with everything that he's going through. Um, or, you know, could we see a Tanner Broom come down? Um, Jacob, I don't think Jacob Hopper, but I think Collingwood's best deal will be with GWS. Um, I'm kind of in two camps. If he leaves, it's going to suck, but... We're going to free up so much cap space to go for a restricted, or sorry, a free agent. And we got uh, money to pay for Dugowie. And we could get a Tim Taranto in. It's a bit of a domino effect. But if he stays, we do keep Brody Grundy. Um, we could probably still keep Jordan Dugowie uh, as well. Um, but the, the old regime has put us in a bad salary cap 
uh, position. Even though we're a little bit better now with all those other players leaving and renegotiating deals and stuff, Graham Wright, I have full, full, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not full love in Graham Wright. Full, not support. Uh, you know, I... I know I, I know that he knows what he's doing. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to back um, Graham Wright in. If he thinks that Brody Grundy is better off elsewhere for our cap or all the players coming in, then Brody Grundy is better off elsewhere. What I did, though, on Instagram, I asked you guys what you thought about it. I'm going to read a couple out right now. Ez Burton says, Part of me wants him to stay and dominate, but other half says, Send him on his way. Hashtag torn. Adrian Bartram96 says, Sickening if it's true. Can't believe we would pay another club $300,000 a year to take him. Billy underscore O says, Won't be happy if we're paying any of his rage. Of her 300K, that's 600 with Trulaw, so kind of like what we were talking about um, as well. Pommy in Oz, a big uh, big fan of Pommy in Oz. You know how much I love him, uh, but still hate Carlton, but I love him. Says, Stay. He owes you guys for a bumper deal. If not, he leaves for two firsts minimum. So that's that's a thing as well. Like, he hasn't recaptured that 2018, 2019 form. Uh, he's had a couple of off years. Um, this could have been the year that he comes through. He unfortunately does his knee. Uh, do we not see him? You know, like, we signed him up when he was playing this awesome AA football, uh, and he hasn't... He hasn't been able to replicate that. And, you know, that does hurt um, a little bit. Nick underscore N27 says, If they trade him off, they have rocks in their head, as it's a stupid idea. Joe Cena says, It's Degoy or Grunny, and at the moment, Degoy seems to be the better choice. And I think, Joe, I think you're right, man. I think, if anything, you kind of want... Degoy is a bit more of an impact player um, at the moment. Adam underscore Erden says, If Grunny goes, but we can... We can get three to four players within his salary. I would take it. Good players only. That's kind of what I was saying before. If we can get, you know, maybe not three to four players, maybe two to three players that we can fit under that um, $800,000. But Taranto would probably want $600,000. But I know what you're saying, uh, Adam. I, I, I do understand that. Lots of free up cap space for um, Taranto. Taranto, lots of rubbishes. load of BS uh, as well here. Donato uh, Villano says, have to keep him, but if he goes, I'd be demanding a top 10 pick. It's not like the fire sale. So yeah, this is exactly what I was saying before. We are in a better um, positioning right now to ask for a top 10 or top 15 or whatever it was pick than we were with Adam Trelaw. Remember that that Adam Trelaw deal went right down to the wire because we were just, um, uh, what, how can I say this nicely? Uh, we were just on our hands and knees just begging someone to, to pretty much take him. And the Bulldogs said, yeah, we can take him, but... His pick 14, like, yes, he's worth a, a top 10 pick, but his pick 14, take it or, or leave it. And obviously we took it. We did sign Ollie Henry because of it, but um, we're in a better position if we want him to um, to leave. And ja Dach Dachison5 says, if it makes way for us to get in Toronto, then let's have it. And I think that's what it is. You have to weigh Grundy leaving and a couple of guns coming in or... Grundy's staying, and we're still going to be in this position in a couple of years. But I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Let me know, would you want Grundy to stay, renegotiate his contract, or do you think it's better for the club if he goes? Um, either way, or not either way, if he does leave, it's going to be devastating, heartbreaking, um, because we know that he loves this club, and he's just a good dude. Uh, I, I absolutely love Grundy. But what you got to think with your head, not your heart, what is best for this football club. But as always, tomorrow I've got my preview coming out for this huge class against Sydney. I love doing these sort of videos. I do have to make a little bit more time for them though. Um, the next one will be about Dan McStay or McPie. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shakers. I'll see you all later.